Starting as a high school teacher who helped win a Nobel Prize, to becoming one of the bloodiest drug kingpins in the United States, Walter White is one of the most iconic characters on television, and for good reason. When we first meet Walter White in the pilot episode, it's hard to believe that this mild-mannered and devoted chemistry teacher, husband, and father could even consider walking on the dark side. While Walter's cancer diagnosis is his primary incentive when he decides to break bad, it's later revealed that the trauma and helplessness he experienced as a child helped to mold him into who he was at the start of the series. Control, particularly the kind which comes from the projection of traditional masculine strength, is one of Walt's key motivators. Growing up in the 1960s, Walt never had a strong father figure due to his father suffering from sickness for as long as he could remember. As he would eventually tell his son, Walt Jr., aka Flynn, Walt's dad was diagnosed with Huntington's disease when Walt was only four or five years old. His only memory of his father is of a frightening hospital visit in his dad's final days. He can recall the smells of the hospital and describes the sight of his father as being all twisted up possibly unable to recognize him. This event comes to define how Walt wants to project himself to his own son while he battles his illness. I don't want that to be the memory you have of me when I'm gone. With his lifelong love of science, Walter White seemed destined for greatness during his college years. While a grad student at the California Institute of Technology, he studied X-ray crystallography and formed a close friendship with fellow scientist Elliot Schwartz. Together, they formed the company Gray Matter Technologies, a name inspired by combining their surnames. Schwartz is German for black, and combined with white gets us gray. As the company takes off, the young chemists file several patents as they continue their research. Walt's work as a crystallography project leader would even contribute to chemistry research winning the Nobel Prize in 1985, an accolade seen in the series pilot that he still clings to decades later. Although Breaking Bad never explicitly outlines the work that Grey Matter Technologies was preoccupied with during Walt's time with the startup, a few clues can be found hidden in a Scientific American cover and article framed on Elliot's library wall, reading, Grey Matter Technologies closes in on the molecular switch. A molecular switch is a nanoscale level device that turns on and off like a light switch, holding tremendous implications for the future of medicine. Walt's eventual fall from an altruist helping humanity to a man who relishes manufacturing a deadly drug only emphasizes the corruption of his spirit. Walter White's transformation from mild-mannered science guy to Machiavellian meth manufacturer can look like a fall from grace, but he's been repressing his darker side since long before cooking his first batch of crystal, something his former partners Elliot and Gretchen try and eventually fail to overlook. Like many narcissists, Walt has a way of maintaining relationships without revealing the true toxicity of his inner nature. These traits only emerge when he feels threatened competitive, or not fully in control. A hint of this inner darkness is first revealed in Walt's relationship with his Grey Matter colleagues, foreshadowing the Shakespearean downfall to come. As a young scientist, Walt was set on a course most could only dream of as his business started to take off, and he became engaged to his lab assistant Gretchen. But after meeting her wealthy family, Walt abruptly broke things off, selling his share of the company for a measly $5,000. As show creator Vince Gilligan told Huffington Post, Gretchen's wealth kind of blew his mind and made him feel inferior and he overreacted. He just kind of checked out. Since the story is told from Walt's perspective, it can seem like Elliot and Gretchen cut him out of the company and profited from his ideas while leaving poor Walt out to dry. It's an idea that Walt is happy to perpetuate, so much so that the lawyer Saul Goodman in Better Call Saul suggests Walt sue the pair. Wrongful termination, intellectual property theft, uh, patent fraud. I mean, I could have sunk my teeth into this. Walt's impulsive departure from Grey Matter forever changes his path in life, but due to his tendency to varnish his personal history in a way that erases his responsibility for his actions, his resentment towards Elliot and Gretchen grows. After Walt's exit from the company, Grey Matter soared in value, eventually becoming a multi-billion dollar corporation by the start of Breaking Bad. To add insult to injury, Elliot and Gretchen became an item in his absence. Whether it's because he's too preoccupied with envy, or he truly was the weakest link at Grey Matter, Walt's former colleagues prosper while his life shifts into neutral. For a while, he continued in research, working at a handful of chemical labs through the years, as he explains in the season 1 episode, Cancer Man. When Walt's crossword puzzle sparked romance with restaurant hostess Skyler leads to marriage and a kid, he finds himself living what many folks would see as the American dream, a stable job, a family, and home ownership. But for Walt's fragile ego, his tepid marriage, middle-class home, and the challenges of raising a son with cerebral palsy never amounted to the dream he sold off. When he trades in his research career for work as a high school chemistry teacher, while he moonlights at a car wash, it's as if he resigned to a life of mediocrity and resentment. 
The low water mark of Walt's life comes with this cancer diagnosis, a growing physical symbol of his decaying soul which pushes him into a life of crime. At this point, Walt's life has become one of droning monotony. He's self-condemned to quietly absorb insults through his gritted teeth while his family is plagued by working class woes, overdue bills, broken appliances, and the added pressure of another child on the way. Even Walt's 50th birthday is a parade of miseries, his son's complaints, his disrespectful students and boss, and a party that seems more for Skyler, where he's upstaged by his brother-in-law Hank's exploits as a DEA agent. When Walt receives his terminal diagnosis after passing out at the car wash a day later, his blank reaction to his bleak news seems a logical extension of his general numbness towards life. But as that information slowly sinks in, it short circuits the filter holding back Walt's rage and resentment, a sign that first emerges when his boss asks him to work late. With his looming death sentence pressuring Walt to leave his family with something to live on, Walt starts to snap out of his numb resignation. But it's a ride along with Hank, during a DEA meth bust that wakes him up to the possibility of breaking bad. It becomes an act of rebellion against both the literal and figurative impotence that have defined his life since foolishly selling his shares in gray matter. While financial pressure and family obligations serve as Walt's official reason for getting into the meth business, they're ultimately just his excuse for rejecting the aggressively beige role he settled into. After all, the general the genesis of Walt's foray into crime came even before his cancer diagnosis when he sees just how much cash Hank sees during a raid in the pilot episode. It's easy money, till we catch you. <laughs> the diagnosis liberates Walt, freeing him to embrace his long repressed darker side. When he realizes his former student Jesse Pinkman cooks crystal, Walt finds himself with both the excuse and the means to get into the business even if he hasn't really considered all of the implications and risks. After his decision, Walt feels more energized than he has in years. He naively tells Jesse he is awake, and uncharacteristically knocks down a teenager for bullying his son, the first signs that Dark Walt has been unleashed. The next stage of Walt's transformation is precipitated by external forces, thanks in large part to his own poor judgment. One of his fatal mistakes is treating the meth business like gig work that he can do for as long, or as short, as he wants. Despite his advanced chemistry knowledge, Walter lacks any real sense of what drug production is like especially when it comes to interacting with dealers. As every character learns in any story about organized crime, there is simply no dabbling in the drug business. With his mind set on a quick payday, and the thrill of doing something the old Walt would have never attempted, Walt immediately finds himself in over his head. When he and Jesse are mistaken as stooges for the DEA by two vengeful dealers, he's forced to cook at gunpoint. Suspecting he'll likely be killed as soon as he's finished, Walt throws together some deadly phosphine gas to get rid of his captors. While this homicidal act of self-defense would leave most people sleepless and traumatized, it initially seems to ignite Walt's libido and empower him, serving as the first of many grim milestones in his long, dark journey. Despite Walt's first kill libido boost, the distressing events around his first cook leave him feeling somewhat troubled. When one of the dealers hit with the phosphine gas, Crazy 8 turns out to still be alive, Walt and Jesse are now saddled with a seriously injured man who wants to kill them. While Walt and Jesse worry about the other dealer's body decomposing in the RV, they secure Crazy 8 in Jesse's basement. The irony being that, at this point, they haven't made a dime from actually selling meth. The pair quickly realize that Crazy 8 has to be finished off, but Walt finds this easier said than done. While he tries to work through his moral conflict by brainstorming the pros and cons of ending the drug dealer, Walt is spared his burden when Crazy 8 tries to kill him. Aware now that there's no going back, the Walt we see moving forward becomes far less conflicted about the ethical implications of his crime. Every crime boss needs a street name. For Walt, his pseudonym Eisenberg becomes something of a sentient alter ego which gradually consumes him. It's a name he takes early on in his underworld career. Inspired by the real-life theoretical physicist, Werner Heisenberg, the name quickly finds its way into a DEA investigation in the Season 2 episode, Breakage. Heisenberg? Yeah, I know. Maybe it's a tweaker urban legend. If Walter White is Dr. Jekyll, Heisenberg is his Mr. Hyde. As Walt continues his descent into moral bankruptcy, his actions as Heisenberg become increasingly more horrific. He eventually turns from his more justifiable violence to more cold-blooded killings. By the time he poisons the child Brock in Season 4 to turn Jesse against the Kingpin Gus and save his own skin, Walter White is no longer recognizable. He's now fully Heisenberg, even if he's still hanging on to the illusion of Walter White, science teacher and family man. After getting rid of Crazy 8, Walt's behavior toward Jesse and Skyler becomes increasingly and unapologetically abusive. For a while, he uses his cancer diagnosis as a scapegoat for his actions. 
But as he gets deeper into the meth business, Walt's actions become more unhinged. Things ultimately come to a head after Skyler learns about his burner phone in the season 2 episode ABQ. Up until this point, Walt has performed his share of unforgivable acts, not the least of which was allowing Jesse's girlfriend Jane to die, an act that would inadvertently result in two passenger planes colliding mid-air when Jane's grieving father, an air traffic controller, makes a fatal mistake. But through it all, Walt continues to feign his old nice guy persona whenever it suits him, often compartmentalizing the darker aspects of his Jekyll and Hyde personality. In the season 4 episode Cornered, Walt finally stops pretending and reveals the truth to Skylar, but she doesn't fully understand how bad things have gotten until Skylar suggests he's in danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. Walt ends up striking a sort of deal with the devil with Skylar, kicking off a cold war that lasts the rest of their marriage. By the end of Breaking Bad, Walter White has murdered dozens, either at his behest or by his own hands. So to say he's irredeemable is something of an understatement. While it isn't quite enough to fall under the category of better late than never, Walt does manage to turn away from the dark side in his final hours, completing his transformation into an arguably tragic anti-hero. Like most narcissists, Walt is able to justify his actions throughout the series, but when he gets Hank killed, it serves as his belated wake-up call, marking the final turning point in Walt's transformation, even though it wouldn't be fully realized until the series' second-to-last episode, Granite State. After months on the run, Walt phones his son Flynn in an effort to arrange a money drop-off that would see his vision for his family finally realized. But when struck by Flynn's anger at Hank's death, Walt decides to turn himself into the police. After completing some final business, after arranging with Elliot and Gretchen to take care of his family financially, Walt admits his true motivations to Skylar, telling her he selfishly did what he did because it made him feel alive. In Walt's final moments, after he kills his old methylamine supplier Lydia with ricin and saves Jesse from a gang of Nazis, he lies down and dies in the meth lab, finally freeing the world from the misery he's brought upon it.